My name is Maina Dalia, and I am from Tuvalu. I am currently not working at the moment. I just recently completed my studies in, in Australia. The climate change issue, related sea level rise is highly impacting uh, vulnerable communities in the Pacific, especially the low-lying atolls in the Pacific, uh, especially countries like Tuvalu that you know have no mountains. The highest point in the island is not more than two meters above the sea. So those islands are vulnerable to any existential threat. Speaking about Kioa specifically in Fiji, um, especially in relation to health, climate change and health, you know, it, it really, um, for communities like Kioa, Rambi, that are isolated from the mainland, from Fiji, um, there is a risk when we talk about climate change and health especially when it comes to uh, medical attention. You know, they need to seek further medical attention to or referral to, to the mainland, to Fiji. But also when it, we talk about um, health and sanitation on the island, you know, there are a lot of um, things that needs to be not just Kioa and Rambi, but also some of the remote islands of Fiji. The, uh, you know, the, the issue of sanitation is very important when we talk about climate change. You know, there are a lot of um, developments that needs to be done to improve health and sanitation on the island. Um, if there is any disaster or any cyclone, the water source will be disturbed on the island of Kioa. And plus, there is no filtering system that is installed in, in, in Kioa to filter the, um, the uh, basic drinking water that they um, consume during drought or so not during drought, but during tropical cyclones. So if the water source is disturbed, you know, the dirt, you know, will be coming down directly to the community. So, you know, the water source is really, dis um, uh, cannot be consumed by, by the community because it's dirty. So there is a lot of things that need to be improved in terms of uh, filtering the water uh, in order for the community to access clean water during those time, you know, and especially when it comes to um, disasters, you know, most of the um, cyclones are not predictable in nowadays. So, or even there is a raining, raining season or raining um, period you know, the water source will be disturbed because it comes from the mountains, you know. It's not um, it's not uh, coming from underneath or... But particularly, there is no filtering system to filter the water in order for the community to access basic clean water for drinking. Of course, we have a, a duty and responsibility um, to look after those who are impacted by climate change. Well, there is always a moral duty for us to do what is best and what is ought to be done uh, to address the climate issue. For bigger countries or industrialized countries, especially our neighboring countries, you know, countries like um, Australia, taking into consideration, you know, we need to, Australia continue to talk about family, you know, being part of the family, us being part of their family. But it seems like this is, the debate is, has been going on for, for so long. 
and little actions that has been taken by the government of Australia. So if we are to be part of the family or if they are to be part of the family, you know, basically in the family, the older one or the, the bigger one will have to look after the small one. So that's simply the, 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 the responsibility of a bigger country, of an industrialized country, is to look after those who, who they, I mean, the, the, the contributions are almost next to nothing. Uh, contribution of countries like Tuvalu to the climate issue is 0 0.00001. And yet they suffer the most for at the expense of others. So there is a moral duty that Australia and other larger countries um, need to play in this climate debate or the climate narrative or the climate issue. And therefore, even if it's a moral duty or not, I think it is important that Australia need to, not just Australia, but industrialized countries, not need to, to do more on climate issue, on the climate issue, need to do more in order to ensure the survival of small island states, small island countries. Oh yeah, I think what Manuatu did and uh, student fighting for climate change has done, you know, is significant. Despite the fact this is just an advisory opinion, but it is very important that a decision to be made by the highest court. So even if it's non-binding, but of course it, it is important. It gives us the leverage or it gives us directions to to tell, to tell the industrialized countries and companies that this is what they should do. You know, it gives us the foundation and give us the legal um, aspect of our work to pursue what, the, what is needed to be pursued in order to, to, to ensure the survival of communities and, and those at the front line. So it is a milestone. It is a, a significant step for, for the Pacific, especially low-lying atolls. Uh, and we are very much looking forward for that opinion to come out and you know to, to turn that opinion into actions and to keep um, government accountable and, uh, in what they do and, and what they are expecting to do in the future. So it is important, and we are glad that you know the United Nations have adopted the resolution.